All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The Secretary General has left Davos and has traveled to Yvedon Le Bain, which is also in Switzerland. He will take part in the 17th seminar of his current special and personal representatives and envoys. We have an update from our peacekeeping mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, MONUSCO, where there was another attack by Kodeko militia overnight. This time, the attack took place in the Plain Savo camp for displaced people nine kilometers east of Jugu in Ituri province. Seven people were reportedly killed and many others fled the site. UN peacekeepers deployed immediately to secure the camp and deter further violence. This attack comes almost a year after the last violent attack there, which left close to 60 people dead in February 2022. It also follows the discovery of mass graves con containing the bodies of 49 civilians, including women and children, in Yamamba and Mbogi villages following Kodeko attacks over the weekend. These incidents are the latest in a string of violent attacks on civilians over the past few weeks, severely impacting civilians and humanitarian operations in Jugu and neighboring Mahagi. This adds to an already dire humanitarian situation in Ituri province, which currently hosts 1.5 million displaced people. Since early January, at least 12 humanitarian organizations have reduced their presence and operations in these territories due to insecurity. MONUSCO is closely following developments on the ground and advocating with the relevant authorities to ensure the protection of civilians, especially those in displacement sites. We're also liaising with humanitarian partners to provide assistance as soon as security permits. Around 2 million people in Lebanon, including 1.29 million Lebanese residents and 700,000 Syrian refugees, are currently facing food insecurity. That's according to the country's first ever Integrated Food Security Phase Classification Acute Food Insecurity Analysis, officially launched today by the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Food Program, and Lebanon's Ministry of Agriculture. The study predicts that the situation is expected to worsen in the coming months. It notes that currency depreciation, the lifting of subsidies, and the rising cost of living are preventing families from obtaining enough food and other basic needs every day. The agencies warn that without urgent action, the consequences for the health and well-being of these vulnerable populations will be severe. In Madagascar, our team, led by resident coordinator Isa Sonogo, continues to support people impacted by the ongoing drought in the south of the country. Our team has supported 53,000 households and farmers, providing more than 30 water tanks, and by constructing irrigation channels, which allow farmers to shift their full attention to their crops instead of securing water. For its part, the World Food Program continues distributing food and cash to more than 1 million people. WFP also just launched an initiative to establish solar powered hubs, a sustainable water source, and telecommunications in remote areas. These allow for the provision of essential services such as energy, water, and digital platforms to members of the community. Our colleagues on the ground are concerned that 12 out of 21 districts in the Grand Sud risk, seeking, risk seeing the situation deteriorate into a food security crisis this spring, with nearly 480,000 children currently at risk of acute malnutrition and needing urgent support. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, said today that proposed amendments to the North Northern Ireland Troubles Legacy and Reconciliation Bill should adequately ensure respect for the rights of victims, survivors, and their families, noting that the draft legislation, as it stands, appears to be incompatible with the UK's international human rights obligations. And finally, we can credit another member state after it qualified to belong to the honor roll. That is Liechtenstein, and we are very grateful to our friends in Vaduz for sending funds to the 2023 regular budget. The honor roll is now at five fully paid up nations. And with that, I'll open the floor up to questions. Yes, Edie? Uh, thank you, Farhan. Um, on, on these um, killings and um, findings of graves in by Kodeko, uh, involving Kodeko in Eastern Congo. Um, are there any details on um, how many um, UN peacekeepers are there? Is the rapid reaction 
force about basically trying to see uh, whether there's enough UN uh, peacekeeping staff there since this seems to be a real hot spot at the moment. Yeah, uh, I mean, there are UN peacekeepers deployed around Ituri, but Ituri is itself a very large province. In this case, these were fairly uh, separate locations. Nyamamba and Mbogi are about 30 kilometers away from the town of Bunya, and the IDP site that was attacked last night is about 75 kilometers from Bunya. So, so it, it's a wide sweep of land. It takes uh, some effort to, to get there. Um, is that it for questions? Okay, one more from you. <laughs> I, I was um, going to ask you um, one other thing. Um, on, on the safer tanker, you gave us um, an update the other day, but <clears throat> it didn't include um, how much additional uh, funding is going to be needed because of the additional cost of finding a crude oil tanker that can hold that massive amount of oil, either for buying or leasing? Uh, yeah, uh, there, there, there is a substantial amount uh, of money being needed. It, it, it's in, it's in um, the, it's, it might be in tens of millions of dollars more. What, what we have been told is that the increase in cost for a very large a uh, uh, crude container is uh, is is more than fifty percent uh, of of the original cost. So it it could it could be something in the neighborhood of about twenty million dollars, but that's a rough figure. Uh, we we are trying, and we are uh, and we are also seeking some support uh, from um, from other contributors to get uh, to get uh, the the funds needed. Uh, as far as I'm aware, David Gressley and the team um, uh, that are involved uh, in dealing with the issue of the FSO software are fairly optimistic that we'll get the funds uh, we need in order to, uh, to um, start uh, the initial work. And uh, with that, uh, sit tight. Uh, you shall be uh, hearing from Paulina Kubiak at this podium in a few minutes. I think that might be her now. Let's see. <laughs> 